that's just so awesome in every single way possible. I can't think of any other word to describe it. But there is one in particular that looks like it could be a crash site. I'm on it. Any of those baboons laid one hairy finger on me, I'll rip them a new asshole. Hello, welcome. You're watching Headset VR. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to a brand new gaming video. Now, I've been looking forward to doing this one all week. This is Destroy All Humans, and we're going to be playing this in UEVR using Prydox Unreal Engine Injector. Now, for those who are new to UEVR, this is basically for any Unreal Engine 4 or higher games, or most of them, you can play them in VR using this mod. So, basically, we're going to start this off, and I'm just going to give a little step-by-step -step guide on what I've done to get this going. So, first of all, assuming that you have UEVR downloaded, now there will be links in the description, I've got the most recent nightly build, so let's get that started. Right, I've got the game started. Right, I've got UEVR started, it'll ask you to restart in admin mode, just do that. Make sure you have the game using OpenXR if you're using a Quest headset. It generally find it runs better using OpenXR anyway. And what we need to do first of all is we'll select the game, which is here, DH Wind Shipping. So click on that, and as you can see, it'll say VR plugins have been detected. So what we need to do is click OK. We'll open the plugins directory. Now this is something I've already do already done. But we'll just click yes and as you can see here we've got open vr so you can look for open vr or open xr but we'll just go into that go into this go into that and then you've got the open vr dll now what you do there is just rename it now i've already renamed it i've just put a one at the end of the name and that will suffice so then you can just close that down now i'm using a custom profile that apparently allows us to play the game with six degrees of freedom in our motion controls so because i've already downloaded that i'm just going to hit import file now if you're wondering what the export file is when you're in game and you've made a profile you've made particular settings you can export the file and it will save those settings for you to perhaps share with other people if you so wish now there are a couple of rendering methods as well native stereo will generally give you the best visuals some games may give you a bit of a weird performance in the headset, so you can change to sync sequential. I've got no idea what this is. Never used it. So anyway, let's go and import the profile. And we're going to go to where I've saved my profiles. Here in imported configs. And we're just going to look for DH Win64 Shipping. And we're going to click open. And then this will pop up, so you can just minimise that down. That just shows that the profile is working. So then now, we're just going to hit the inject button. Now usually it's better, I find personally, to inject when in game. Some games it doesn't matter, you can inject on the menu screen. But personally, I always use the in an in-game injection as such. So let's just inject. And UEVR VR will start up. As you can see, that's it. UEVR will start up. I'm now in the VR headset. Now, one thing you'll have to be wary of in this game is your character is rather short. So it may look like I'm actually low on the ground. Now, there's a couple of ways you can play this. You can probably play mouse and keyboard. 
let's just test that theory out. Yep, we can play mouse and keyboard. You can also play with the gamepad. So I'll pick up my gamepad and we can play with the gamepad. But we don't want to play with those because it doesn't give the most immersive experience. So let's pick up VR controllers. There we go. And as you can see, I'm looking at a little bit on the short side below my UFO. So to do something about that, what we do is we set standing height. Now with this game, because you were so short, I found a little sneaky trick. If I get off my chair and I squat down on my knees, this is a bit silly, a bit extreme, I know. And we click set standing height. Set standard origin, recenter view, recenter horizon. There we go. Okay, so, and then I'm going to sit back on my chair, I'm a, and I'm a little bit taller than what I would have been normally. Okay, so, now what I am going to do is I'm going to bump up the resolution. I mean, this depends on your own personal preferences and settings. There you go, it'll make it visually in the headset that bit better. Okay, now these are the way I play games in UEVR. Now I'm gonna disable this setting because I've got the key bind for the menu. I don't wanna accidentally hit the, t the two sticks and bring that menu up mid game. It's a little distracting. And then we go into runtime, which is the setting we've got here. If you like, you can have the UI that will follow your view. The, that's the UI with the map and when it says find crypto etc that kind of thing we're going to go into Unreal Engine we are in native stereo now sometimes some games can be a little bit funny in native stereo and you can enable native stereo fix we're not going to do that though we're going to go on to input and as you can see this is the right controller so if I just shut down the UEVR menu for a second I can wave the controller around as you can see with my well I've got the gun moving around. So we have aiming with the right controller and moving orientation is with the left controller. So if I just move with my left stick, as you can see, it moves me around. And then we're going to go into camera. Now it's always a good idea to have decouple pitch enabled because some people might get a bit motion sick and it can give you a bit of a weird feeling because it just centers the horizon basically. So always make sure you've got decoupled pitch enabled, particularly with third person games, it's very helpful. Now I like to set myself a few key binds. Sometimes you'll find these options at the top sort of need redoing mid game. So I'm just gonna set a few key binds, so. And it's always good to do that when you're in a stable and level position. As you can see, I've just shrunk my character down a little bit by doing so. Right, so, and then there's a few things here that help with cutscenes. Now, if you want the cutscene to play good in your headset, you have toggle 2D screen mode. So I'm just gonna set a cutscene for that. And as you can see here on the monitor, it's gone black, but in my headset, I've got a 2D screen. So press it again, and we're back to normal. Toggle in game UI, so these bits of UI that you can see. Now, you won't see this on, on the monitor, only on the headset, so keep on for that, remove the UI, press it again, it's back. And disable VR, so this is also good for cutscenes. All parts, you can't click on something on the UI, it's a bit tricky. And there we go, we've disabled U, uh, VR, so in the headset, I've got pretty much a frozen screen on the monitor, it's back to flat screen so let's just go back into VR now another cutscene another cutscene another key bind I will do is disabled you object hook now what this will do if I just show you I'll make a key bind for it right so let's just get rid of the UEVR menu so if we go into a cutscene and you want it to look good on the monitor you can disable VR, for example, all that. And then, as you can see, I've got the floating gun. And then toggle your object hook makes a character appear. So it would make your character appear, and the cutscene will play as it does if it's flat screen. 
However, if you want it, the cutscene in your headset, you don't disable VR, you enable 2D screen, and then disable your object hook. So let's go back into VR and pull the menu back up again. Okay, so now a couple of things I always do as well, which I find does help, is you change these projections to symmetrical. There we go. And then here in the main menu, this is where you'll attach the camera to say the character mesh or make character meshes invisible. Any meshes you've made invisible can be made revisible by disabling your object hook. Anyway, that's a little bit of a walkthrough on what I've done to get this going. Like I said, we've got motion controls, so we can move the camera or the way I'm looking with the right stick, just generally move around with the left stick. I can jump with the A button, B button at the moment, not doing anything. Now, you should have a D-pad. You can just see in the bottom left corner there, look, there's a D-pad. And if you press on the little slanted bit on your Quest controller, and then move the stick up, down, left or right, that will enable those four actions. Okay, so we've also got these other controls over here on the other side. So your grips are the right button, or RB and LB, and the triggers are, well, they're just triggers. And do things like that. Anyway, right, let's get on. And now this game, it's not massively popular, but it is massively fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. There's lots of tongue-in-cheek humour. Make him forget. And we've taken his disguise. Now, as you can see, that looks really weird now because I've got this guy's disguise and the character mesh is the wrong size. So I'm just going to go into third person for this. Now, I need to get closer to another guy and press the Y button and it tops up my disguise. Oh! Wonder if anybody'd notice if I went AWOL. Now I'm in trouble! Coming after me. Show me what you got. Will you get a load of this new Brazier? I could torpedo a U boat with these things. Really? So that is the only real pitfall with this, is when you steal a disguise of another NPC, you don't really keep the uh, same the same visuals really, it's uh, oh. I mean, I have had a look to see if the meshes are there for us to remove, I couldn't really find anything, so it's not something I've actually done, if you do find some of the meshes and by all means you know do let us know whoa hey i hope the rain don't find out about me and her sister at the wedding boy what a dish she was hey space rat your term whoa magic power you head little man Thought you'd be alive. Ah, oh, Crypto. Look what they've done to us. Laid us open like an animal. How could intelligent creatures do this? 
Okay, monkeys. You want a war? You got a war. You want a piece of this? Come down. This is such fun, this is. Uh -huh. Let's get out. Damn those humans. And in we go. Right, I think we're going to end the video just there. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's the mission over. So I'm just going to end this video here. So you've been watching Headset VR playing Destroy All Humans using UE VR. If you do like what you've seen in this video, then please do give the video a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. You'll see every VR video that I upload. Otherwise, if you want to make any comments, just put them in the usual place. I will respond to every single comment. Currently, I'm using an RX 7900XTX GPU, a Ryzen 9 7900 CPU, and I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, and today I've been using a Quest 3 headset. Anyway, like I say, that's into the video. I am going to do another video of this because it is a it's a damn fun game. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And the next video, I'm going to show you an anal probe. In game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you for the next one, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.